I'm a sculpture teacher and an art teacher at uh, a local high school, and I'm always looking for new ways of, you know, torturing my children. Um, God, I was thinking stimulating. <laughs> hey, it's the same thing. Um, so I accidentally came upon this power pole material, and I decided to order some, and we experimented with it in school. And they loved it, and I decided, then when I was reading their website, I found out about you being, uh, being able to become a certified power pole instructor. That was three years ago, and I finally got an email back just before the summer saying that they were having a workshop here in Florida if I wanted. The oh, it took them three years. But I'm a patient person, so I went ahead and got certified, and um, right now I'm putting, I'm trying to, get everyone educated about what it really is and the potentials for it. Anyone can use this, whether you're um, just a, whether you're a painter, whether you're already a sculptor, um, there, there are numerous ways that you can use this. Um, what I'm going to show you is basically how, I, I like to do the, the figures, as you can tell. Um, I'm, it, I also paint, but I I've fallen in love with this, so I've incorporated it into some of my other stuff as well. But I'll go ahead and show you how I get started with this, and then I'll jump into several of the different um, powerful products that, that uh, I use for this. A lot of you will most likely know what this is. This is how every one of these sculptures got started, three pieces of wire. Um, two of, one of them is a little bit shorter, which is going to be for the head, and I went ahead and got a couple of things going while we were reading. The shortest piece you'll use to create the head, and all that is, is you take one, you bend it to meet, you keep going, you crisscross, you crisscross, crisscross, until you get the size head that you want. And then all you do is you twist, and you twist until you have about a one inch, three quarters of an inch neck. And obviously you have two things that look like arms. They're not arms. I'll explain that later on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take the other two and you find the middle and you're going to twist, twist, twist till you get it to maybe about six to eight centimeters. Which you is don't know what centimeters are. Okay, about four inches. There you go. Um, which is going to create the body, the four spine. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be the spine. So I put that aside, and I have one already done here. But I'm going to show you how to put it together. Okay. This is the head. These are the spine, spine, spine and the arms, arms, and legs. arms and legs. Plus two more arms, right? <laughs> you're going to bend these two down. Then you're going to take the two extra arms and meet these two actual arms. And all you're going to do is take this one and you're going to wrap once and it comes down to form the body. half of the body. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. If it, if it is too long, all you have to do is simply trim it off. Okay? I made these a little bit too long so that just for the demo purposes. You'll use a piece of tape just to hold that in place. And here you have two arms, two legs, the body, and the head. Really easy. That's the easy part. Okay. Here's one completely put together taped here to hold it together, and I decided I wanted a voluptuous woman, so I gave her hips. You can decide you want them to be completely straight, so you can leave them like this. If you, or especially if you want a guy, you just leave them like this, or if you want a skinny lady, you do this. But I decided for this one, I was going to do one with curves. After we've done this, then we simply take aluminum foil, and you just start packing it onto the wire, and this is going to create the flesh. the flesh. Really, really easy. Now, you keep packing it on until it gets nice and tight, because you want your foundation to be really good, because if the foundation is not good, everything else is going to fall apart. And that's the 
that's something I say to my students all the time. If the foundation isn't good, nothing else is really going to work. So you have the leg, and then in order to create the, can I say, the butt, you're going to crumple up a piece of aluminum foil, hold it in place, again, then you're going to take another piece, this time I rip, and just start wrapping that in place. And you can see, see it start to take shape, correct? Yeah. And you do the identical thing on the other side. And then after you've completely covered everything, you cover it with masking tape. Some people don't do the masking tape part. To me, it's a, lot, it's a stronger structure if you put the masking tape on. That's just me personally. Um, but in a lot of videos that you watch, they just go from this directly into working with the copper pole. But I think adding the paper tape onto it makes it much stronger. There are secrets to the head. You can just do a ball of aluminum foil, like most people do. But there are tricks. You can take a styrofoam ball, you can place it inside, and then you can wrap it with the aluminum foil as well. And then go to the tape. And you get a, a much rounder, a, a better form head. So that's, that's one trick. Um, some of my sculptures have faces, some don't. Easy way to do them, simply get a, a mold. Create your own faces using air dry clay. And I've done some here. These aren't quite dried yet, so I won't use them tonight. But it's really easy, and then all it does, after it's covered with the tape, you just simply tape it onto the styrofoam ball and you go from there. Easy enough? So far, so good?